Oops. Man, I just had the hardest time. We obviously need to work on the hat for Sancho Claus. His hat keeps falling off. Hi, guys. <laughs> Hi, guys. It is just another dark, gloomy, cold, depressing, collapsitarian day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization on this gloomy Wednesday. What are we? Sancho, November 21st, 2018, I believe, here in the collapse of global industrial civilization in Garfield, Texas. And I've got to go do my part to support global industrial civilization by making $15 an hour shoveling dirt, moving dirt around. Uh, so before I go, I just want, for today's Chronicle of the Collapse, we're going to do is kind of a part two from yesterday's rant from the, uh, from the New York Times. The New York Times had a link their article on, uh, on kind of on climate change being worse than previously thought. Uh, they had a link in that article that I went on to continue this discussion. So we're going to pick up today from where uh, the New York Times left off yesterday. And we're going to go over to the University of Hawaii where uh, we mentioned this fellow, Professor Camilo Mora. Hopefully, uh, Professor Mora will be up for an interview with me here in the near future so we can continue uh, this discussion. But we're going to look at the news from the University of Hawaii study in nature reveals urgent new time frame for climate change. <clears throat> seesaw variability, seesaw variability of global temperatures often engenders debate over how seriously we should take climate change. But within 35 years, Within 35 years, even the lowest monthly dips in temperatures will be hotter than we have experienced in the past 150 years at least, according to a new and massive analysis of all climate models. The tropics will be the first to exceed the limit of historical extremes and experienced an unabated heat wave that threatens biodiversity and heavily populated countries with the fewest resources to adapt. Yep, it uh, doesn't look good for Lagos, Nigeria here, uh, or Jakarta, Indonesia, Bangkok, Thailand, Nairobi, uh, not looking good. And even Honolulu and Mexico City are uh, not, uh, not looking too good here in this, uh, in this study. I'm going to put the link to, uh, to this University of Hawaii news press release, and then it will link you to the full study, but you're going to have to pay to get to the full study. Anyway, back to University of Hawaii. Ecological and societal disruptions huh, by modern climate change are critically determined by the time frame over which climates shift. Camilo Mora and colleagues in the University of Hawaii at the Manoa College of Social Sciences Department of Geography have developed one such time frame. The study entitled 
the projected timing of climate departure. Climate departure from recent variability was published in the October 10th issue of Nature and provides an index of the year when the mean climate of any given location on Earth <clears throat> will shift continuously outside the most extreme records experienced in the past 150 years. <clears throat> The new index shows a surprising result. A surprising result. Areas in the tropics are projected to experience <coughs> unprecedented climates <coughs> first within the next decade. Unprecedented climates first within the next decade. <clears throat> Under a business as usual scenario, the index shows the average location on Earth uh, will experience a radically different climate by the year 2047. Under an alternate scenario with greenhouse gas emission stabilization, the global mean climate departure will be the year 2069. So according to this report, somewhere between 2047 and 2069, otherwise roughly between 2050 and 2070 is when uh, you can judge, when, when, when the climate uh, it, it is simply, you know, just, just going to go off the charts. And, and this, you know, roughly uh, coincides with what my own uh, research for what that's worth is between 2050 and 2070 is what we're talking about, guys, uh, that you don't want to be around on this planet. So I'm glad to report, well, in 2047, I will be 88 years old. All right. <clears throat> Let's see. So what does Dr. Mora have to say about his surprising results? <clears throat> Quote, the results shocked us. Regardless of the scenario, changes will be coming soon within my generation. I don't know how old Dr. Mora is. Within my generation, whatever climate we were used to will be a thing of the past. Hmm. The scientist calculated the index for additional variables including evaporation, precipitation, and ocean surface temperatures, and pH. When looking at sea surface pH, the index indicates that we surpassed the limits of historical extremes in 2008. This is all talking about ocean acidification is what this, this is, is looking at ocean acidification and pH that uh, we, we passed the limits of historical extremes 10 years ago. This is consistent with other recent studies and is explained by the fact that ocean pH has a narrow range of historic variability and because the ocean has absorbed a considerable fraction of, of human-caused CO2 emissions. Yes, a considerable fraction. I think I've, aren't they saying like 90%? I guess that's a considerable fraction. The study found that the overarching global effect of climate change on biodiversity will occur 
not only as a result of the largest absolute changes at the poles, but also perhaps more urgently from small but rapid changes in the tropics, tropical species are unaccustomed to climate variability and are therefore more vulnerable to relatively small changes. The tropics hold the world's greatest div diversity of marine and terrestrial species and will experience unprecedented cl climates some 10 years earlier than anywhere else on Earth. In predominantly developing countries, over 1 billion people under an optimistic scenario and 5 billion people under a business as usual scenario live in areas that will experience extreme climates before the year 2050, according to Mora's research. This raises concerns for changes in the supply of food and water, human health, wider spread of infectious diseases, heat stress, conflicts, and challenges to economies. This is co-author Ryan Longman talking about the, uh, the knock-on effects to global industrial civilization. Quote, our results suggest that countries first impacted by unprecedented climates are the ones with the least capacity to respond to it. Ironically, these are the countries that are least responsible for climate change in the first place. Close quote. While the study describes global averages, the authors have visualized their data on an interactive map displaying when climate will exceed historical precedence for locations around the world, says co-author Abby Frazier, quote, we hope that with this map, people can see and understand the progression of climate change in time where they live, hopefully connecting people more closely to the issue and increasing awareness about the urgency to act. Close quote. The study suggests that any progress to slow ongoing climate change will require a larger commitment from developed countries to reduce their emissions but also more extensive funding of social and conservation programs in developing countries to minimize climate change impacts. The longer the wait, the more difficult remediation will be. Summing it up, from, uh, from Dr. Mora, quote, scientists have repeatedly warned about climate change and its likely effects on biodiversity and people. Our study shows that such changes are already upon us, but we cannot leave without a Hollywood ending from Dr. Mora. The results, these results, should not be reason to give up. Rather, they should encourage us 
to reduce our emissions and slow the rate of climate change. This can buy time for species, ecosystems, and ourselves to adapt to the coming changes. Close quote. Okay. Let's all buy time to adapt to the coming collapse of a planet. Good luck with that one, but I'm going to wrap up today's chronicle of the collapse here on the eve of Thanksgiving, and the little dog and I are going to get in my gas-sucking truck so we can become part of the, the statistic for November 21st, 2018, and that is that more Americans... This, this is all about how we're reducing our emissions as uh, more Americans will be behind the wheel of a gas-sucking vehicle or uh, on a plane, on an airplane uh, today, November 21st, 2018, uh, more Americans will be spewing uh, fossil fuels uh, today than any day in history. This is how we are responding to the crisis. This is how we are adapting uh, to the upcoming changes uh, by piling into our gas-sucking cars and getting on airplanes to uh, celebrate Thanksgiving, things to be grateful for. Uh, yes, uh, we can all see where this is going, but uh, I do have to make $15 an hour shoveling dirt uh, to do my part for the global industrial economy and the collapse of a planet. So let me get out there and get her done, and I suggest you get out there and shovel some dirt while you still can. Happy Thanksgiving, guys! Enjoy your happy motoring! Bye, guys.